Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Easy Conversations, a podcast about having easy conversations. I'm your host, Furkan Dandia. In this week's episode, I sit down with Chris Wilson, who is the co-founder of the Unshakable Man Coaching Practice. Uh, Chris and I talk about some of his earlier childhood experiences, especially with the trauma he had from the relationship he had with his mother. And for years, Chris avoided dealing with that trauma until much later in life. By doing that work, Chris was so inspired that he decided to co-found the Unshakable Man Coaching Practice. I hope you can get a lot out of this episode, and if at the end you could leave a five-star review, I would truly appreciate it. Joining the podcast, I appreciate you taking the time. Super grateful to have you on here, and you know I've already enjoyed some of the sessions we've had and the conversations we've had, so I'm hoping the listeners can get a feel for some of the things you're doing. But uh, before we get started, I want to give you an opportunity to first introduce yourself, uh, where you are, and some of the work you're doing currently in the Unshakable Man space as well. Mm. Uh, thank you so much for having me here on the show. And uh, yeah, my name is Chris Wilson. I live in San Francisco, California with my fiance and our cat Chesterfield. We've been locked in the same tiny apartment together here in the city for, for an entire year and uh, where we are flourishing. And I would say the big, a big part of the reason why we're flourishing is, is, is the brotherhood that uh, I've been creating with, uh, with the men over at The Unshakable Man. Um, I, I mean, I, what do we do? We, we create spaces. I mean, you just got to experience this. Uh, mm-hmm. We create spaces where men can take safe risks of vulnerability. And I like to say so that they can connect with who they truly are uh, and, and discover how the ex- experience of, of healing, connecting and growing. Uh, and even as I say that right now, it's just like, it's so opposite of the just opposite of the the images of, of, of the the messages we're given as mm-hmm. men and as and as women as human beings of what what is important and what is powerful and what is meaningful and um and and what is useful mm-hmm. right uh, and and even in in just this morning we had a breathwork session led by Brandon Grew and uh, there was a man in there. There's a man uh, uh, in in the Netherlands that had come, and there was a man in New York City, and a man, uh, and a few men from California. And at the end of the session, two, like, without sharing anything that's personally identifiable at, at all, the a, a group of the men all connected on the same thing, which was, man, I I really want to, I really, I'm really happy I gave myself this. Mm-hmm. Like I'm really, it, I, one man was laying on the ground in his office, right? And another was like, like needing to, to leave. And, and he was like, man, I, I just, I'm, I'm so happy I gave myself this. And then the other men chimed in too. And they're like, oh, me too. And it's, it's this idea of like, that for me, I'm, I feel like I'm on the other side. Um, Mm -hmm. I have now been doing this for 10 years. I'm now in the Mm -hmm. side of, oh, other men are getting this too. Like, like not just me, not just one-on-one, but a brotherhood of a hundred different men who are Mm -hmm. all, uh, appreciating this. And these men represent this image of this tough masculine man that I still have in my mind. And they are appreciating simply taking showing up for breath work on a Wednesday to let go of their emotional residue and to sit with a group of men and to just be with how they are, whether that's joyful or angry or upset or sad. And to realize that I am not those emotions, but through experience, not just a man telling you it, right? And not like a a coach or a therapist just working with you one-on-one, but truly through a connected experience of brotherhood. And, uh, and that's that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's it's important to note that you know first of all for me experiencing one session, um, so I I can't speak to all of it, but just mm-hmm. having that like you said brotherhood, 
but not feeling judged, not feeling shame, um, just being, being, you know, getting that freedom of being yourself. It's so important because we don't get that opportunity, whether it's in society or general, even within our friends, like I find that uh, you don't get that freedom. So, you know, I, I appreciate all the work you're doing and, and what you've created, because I think it, it is making a difference. Mm. I'm, I'm really, I thank you for that. And I, I notice how curious I am right now because <laughs> you, I'm curious just about your experience going from being just a, a relationship on the internet to, to just getting to go through signing up on the website to coming in and, and, and coming into a zoom meeting. What was that like for you? Well, I mean, if I was, fully honest, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, so I came in with an open mind. Um, I, I mean, I felt like it would be an experience where a bunch of men would be getting together and talking and, and it was along those lines, but it was a lot more deeper than I thought. And, and like I said, it, it felt, um, I felt free. I felt like I wasn't being judged. I felt like I was myself um mm. just being comfortable in my skin and and i think the brotherhood aspect of it that you talk about is is so important because you know community is important for me and you know we all kind of go through struggles and adversity and we often feel alone in those um times and having a community of men that you can lean on is so important yeah yeah. I honor you, man. It's, and for, for coming in and with that open mind, that curiosity, I know for me, I, that, that was my path into this work was a big, I would say about 50% curiosity and 50% trauma. Right. Mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. Right. And that there was an absolute need. I didn't really have a choice. It was like, Oh, I need to figure, I need to figure out, solve some of these problems before my ship sinks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, but I, I didn't int intuitively, I didn't know what I needed. I didn't go yeah. searching for a brotherhood. I didn't even know what men's work was. I didn't, I didn't. And I, I think that's probably true for a lot of men that mm -hmm. like, I, it's hard. You, you don't miss what you know, never knew you could have. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and along those lines, like, I, you know, you touched on it. Um, and one of the things I wanted to explore with you was, you know, you, you started this, uh the unshakable man like four years ago right and before that you were in software sales so what was your journey like what brought you to this point uh so i know you touched on it it was you know in a way you needed to find a way so you didn't your ship didn't sink as you said um but like maybe talk about what it was like and what was your kind of point where you're like okay this is where i need to make a change uh well it definitely starts as a young man uh mm -hmm. it's it's there's no way of removing my childhood experiences from from what brought me here today mm -hmm. uh i i grew up in uh in a picturesque community in cape cod massachusetts a a a, a, a um tourist uh just mecca mm -hmm. a, a, a major tourist a, a attraction in new england and uh, I grew up in a bed and breakfast and uh, I like to call it like the family farm. I got to see my dad every morning working and every night and, uh, and it, we didn't talk deep, deeply together, but there was just this immense uh, connected nature to my relationship with my little brother and my father from growing up in like a family farm, right? Mm -hmm. We were working side by side. But my relationship with my mother was was very different. It's very traumatic. It is very up and down, uh, creepy, scary, uh, abusive, and uh, traumatizing. And mm -hmm. yet, I didn't know. Um, I didn't know that I was in as a young man. I didn't know that I was in a situation where I could say that I had problems uh, because it wasn't something where my uh, immediate, uh, it wasn't, 
I, I would get have the police called on me at times by my mother and 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 take removed from the house or I wouldn't know if she was going to be able to if she was going to show up uh, to pick me up from school and um, and only now looking back as a 37 year old man um, was do I realize that I, I was a, 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 I was a very angry young man and I used that anger uh, to, uh, I, I, I connected with that anger in a way and found a constructive outlet of sport that I over, that I identified with fully and created my identity around and mm -hmm. found all of my meaning out of, but really underneath, I was an extremely angry, sad young man and I didn't go to college. I ended up racing bikes, trying to make the US national team. And then after, uh, when I was 22, I crashed, broke both my arms and my bike and went from cycling to nothing, mm -hmm. lost that identity. And then all of that energy, all of that intense energy went into, I need to find a job. So what were they both? What do they both have in common for me is it was all about safety. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I never felt safe and I never felt trusting of my environment. and. Uh, like it would be there. Like, would I would I have a roof over my head, or or uh, would she be there? Would she not be there? And my relationship with that was an intense anger. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't even have said I was angry. I would have said I'm tough. I'm a tough kid, mm -hmm. right? And and the then the thing is, is then it was rewarded, right? I got rewarded for that, for that toughness, for that brashness, and found my way into software sales, and with having not gone to college and not having a college degree and getting a job off of Craigslist and then working my way up, uh, I thought of myself as a fighter. I mm -hmm. thought of myself as uh, as a warrior, right? Uh, and really as an athlete, right? I, I didn't, I, I went to military college for a year. I wanted to go into the the Navy SEALs and, and everything. And it's like, this was this was what I had, I had to, even now I notice I'm scrunching my eyes. It's like, ah. Oh. Like who was this young man, right? Like, mm -hmm. and but underneath, what it really was was just an anxiety. It was just constant. Um, uh, just parts of my body felt ways that now I'm attuned to them, and I'm like, oh, that's anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's not. This is this is not you. This is anxiety, and and so much so that I was getting itchy at times in my life, and I never associated that the itchiness I was feeling on my body or the rash I was getting on my body had anything to do with anxiety, right? And uh, and so lo and behold, five years into my career, seven, seven years into my career, I, I had, was at the peak of my sales career. I'd gotten uh, an amazing job in San Francisco. And I three months into the job, I started getting itchy and I was having trouble paying attention. And I had previously overcome my relationship with ADD and and stuff through brute force, right? Mm -hmm. By by being tough and and being intense with myself, and I got a massive anxiety attack in front of a ten person boardroom and uh, presenting doing the thing that previously had been my whole identity mm -hmm. that I had never been anxious. And now here I am in the in the peak of where I want to be, and um. I lost my vision in my left eye and almost passed out and got very scared. And immediately that I would say that that was like my heart attack. That was the thing that woke me up, but it also was the beginning of um, my dark night of the soul, if you will, my three mm -hmm. years of, of uh, striving and thrashing. And, and my, I again did not identify as having a depression. Mm -hmm. um, and yet for me, um, Actually, this is kind of neat. I this happened recently. I saw a picture on Instagram, and it was a picture of the um, of the incline in Colorado Springs, and it's this stairway on a on 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 train tracks that goes straight up the mountain mm -hmm. in Colorado Springs. And when I was at the Olympic Training Center, uh, my grandma lived across the street from the Olympic Training Center, and that's how I had gotten into the into wanting to go to the, to the Olympics yeah. was saying, uh, was saying my grandma taking me on a tour. And then I put all that anger in, in as a young man into I'm going to go get to grandma's house and go to the Olympic training center. And I did it and I got there. And what did I do when I got there? I ran up and down this thing 
like 50 times, like tons of times, 50, mm-hmm. literally no exaggeration. Mm-hmm. And it was detrimental to the workouts and the things that I needed to be doing, but I was running up this hill. Now, fast forward to when I'm 29 and I'm here in San Francisco after this anxiety attack, I moved into an apartment here in San Francisco and I didn't actually connect these dots until seeing this picture on Instagram very recently, almost like like six weeks ago has happened. Mm -hmm. I saw this picture and I was like, oh, I've run up that a ton. And then I had this memory of what did I do when I was depressed? I ran from the bottom of my steps in the, on Mission Street in, in San Francisco to the top of Twin Peaks every day for 90 days. Mm-hmm. I ran to the top of this hill. And when I look back on that experience, I'm now 37 years old. And this was before finding men's work and before having any idea about emotional awareness, embodiment, physical sensations in my body, breath work, connection, any of these things. What was I doing? I was running up and down that hill and it was out of an inability to be able to sit with and to have the tools to get through what I was feeling. I was feeling all of this resistance and and intensity. And the only, my relationship with that was to fight, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I fought Uh, and fighting, I'm going to say is not, I I, want to be very careful of, of, of saying like one thing is fight, flight, or freeze is better or worse. But I think one of the constructive outcomes of the fight response is that you get agency, right? It, it, there's protection in that, mm-hmm. in the fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm, I am thankful for that. But at the same time, it tore me apart. And when I, um, and then I was very, I was very lucky to, to have that year of, of trying all different kinds of things. And uh, I got into design thinking and mm-hmm. yoga and breath work and found this program called UnCollege, which was mm-hmm. a guided gap year program for high school students and ended up getting a job at, 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 the, at this program and moved into a dorm room. And I had a whole year living with high school students, hel- helping them learn things like, I was basically like a live-in RA coach who got okay. to teach workshops and, and create on creativity, design thinking, getting a job, sales, communication, listening, feeling, and what did we do there? We did circles. We mm. sat in a circle every Friday as a house and we would check in. And one of the men that I invited to come in and one of the individuals that I invited to come in as, a, uh, as a, an influence, uh, a thought leader was uh, my then would become my business partner, Mike Sagoon. Mm-hmm. And he was a men's coach. And he came in and to talk with the students and, and uh, I got so uh, enthralled with like what he was doing. And we teamed up on a, on a project together and, um, and he invited me to come to a men's retreat. And when I, he actually invited me to organize it with him and we organized the men's retreat together. And through that experience of doing the men's retreat, I found out that I was actually scared to invite men in my life to be a part of the men's retreat. Mm -hmm. And I didn't invite any of the men from my software sales days to come. And then we got to the retreat and what happened? Uh, Three of the men that were in that world with me had shown up. And I realized right there and then that this was uh, something that was going on with me about a Mm -hmm. vulnerability that I had and Mm -hmm. that this isn't weird and that this work is actually in incredible and and that i had been judging these guys as being oh you look tough so you wouldn't be interested in this stuff Mm -hmm. yeah and and i mean thanks for sharing all that and i think the last point it's it's interesting you mentioned that because it was almost like you were projecting your own self onto them right Mm -hmm. um in a way because you had been the tough guy fighting mm-hmm. through things and you just assume they would be the same right so mm-hmm. um no and i appreciate your story because i think it's important we we all kind of struggle through that um we don't know like and and a lot of it does initiate from childhood right and we just we're too afraid to sit in stillness and face it because we know mm-hmm. 
the answers that are going to come out of it. And we're just too afraid to face it. And it's only when we do sit down and work through it is when we finally find that freedom, that liberation, you know, and um, finally feel like we are, we can be ourselves. But also, I will say that um, I, we do whatever we have to do to survive, to get to where we are today, mm -hmm. right? To where mm -hmm. we are today, to be where we are and where we're conscious and able to take care of our own needs. And when that happens, what I notice even in your description is like, we don't sit with it, right? But we were never meant to sit with it alone. It was never, mm -hmm. we, were, we were supposed to learn this when we were three years old or five years old and our parents were supposed to learn this. And it's okay that they didn't teach us. Mm -hmm. They didn't know, they weren't withholding anything from us. They right. just didn't know, right? And I've met, I've met human beings who have had meditation and who have had uh, uh, somatic, open, uh, soothing relationships with elders very early in their life. And that's, I, I actually think that that's where our society and where manhood and our culture of, of go, go, go has, has brought us. And so for, for me, I love one of the things we talk about a lot in the unshakable man is uh, the fundamentals of spiritual psychology and the fundamentals of spiritual psychology are, th are that we are all born innocent. We're all born like as this innocent creature, right? Mm -hmm. And we have, we have our generational traumas and all of this stuff that gets put on to us. And then we move through our life and we do whatever we have to do to survive. And along the way, we come up with scripts, we come up with algorithms and ways of being mm -hmm. that uh, the mind and the brain, the brain uses and the body to, uh, to respond more quickly and save energy, right? And living consciously is when we get to a point where we can make a choice about those automatic reactions. And taking a deep breath and going, oh, when I notice I have a problem and noticing having a problem is anytime I say the words I have a problem with in my head or out loud, or whenever my body tightens up. And if I'm now that we just look at like how we're all, the, the pandemic, especially like we're working constantly, we're tight, these are all physical sensations that tell our brain that something is wrong, mm -hmm. right? And so we have to relax and open and connect to it. And that process is like the opposite of what our egoic mind is telling us makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Like, like yeah. my mind comes in and says, Chris, no, 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 no. You need to get back and write an email newsletter because, oh, geez, like if you don't go in there or you need to do your taxes or like, right? Or you need to pay yeah. the rent or don't forget that thing you need to do for Anna. And it's like the opposite. So what I notice is with these circles, and I think you got to see this just with the, the three of us, and, is, um, is, and this is what I think I hear from men, is that, uh, is that, wow, I'm so happy I gave myself this, is it's like, there's, there's a real feeling of like, oh, there's, like I see you in an office right now, right? And it's like, oh, like he's here he's got an earpiece and he's got a collared shirt on. You look like, uh, you look like you and I could have worked together in ad sales. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, right. Like, and I'm like, Oh, like if he's here, I can be here. Maybe I can let my nervous system down. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we find out we're not here to have a conversation. Right. Like, cause we're not talking about our problems we're experiencing. And I really, I, I, I know like it's in my gut. I'm like, this can heal the world. Like this mm -hmm. is exactly, if only we could spread this to every man on earth, mm -hmm. this is, this is how we heal and how we show up so that we can show up and be our true selves, right? Not whatever my reactions are, not how someone has hurt me in the past, not my most recent breakup, not my fear of being alone, right? Like, and and it literally can change your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. And 
it's important to highlight that, you know, in terms of even the, the group work, and that's the biggest piece, you know, we often as men tell ourselves that I'm alone, I'm the only one dealing with this, I've got to keep it together. But what I felt was really powerful in that session was um, just letting go, just letting go. And like I said earlier, being yourself and not feeling alone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whether your problem is big or small, we're all dealing with adversity in different ways. And the best way to support each other is through experiencing it together. And, and that's what I felt was I experienced what you shared. I experienced what, I, you know, the other individual sh shared. I, I could experience it um, and feel it, you know, and, and, and so, it, yeah. So something that's even cool let's get even more deep into that right um is this is this has been huge for my relationship with my partner and my relationship with myself and my relationship with my my mom mm -hmm. right from a healing perspective is that when when another human being when another man sits in the space and he has a, an, a, a he, he is having his experience and then i have my experience the emotional contagion, so there's eight components of emotional awareness. Emotional contagion is one of them. And to be precise with our, for our own me search, is what I like to call it, is you did not make me feel something. When you had an experience, I felt something, mm -hmm. right? Like my experience is my experience and your experience is your experience. But in the passing of our day-to-day -day lives, we save time with our language and say something like, oh, I was feeling what you were feeling. And it's like, no, that's not, we don't actually know that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know what you're feeling and no one can tell you what you're feeling. No scientist, no test. It's one of the only things we literally cannot tell you, mm -hmm. put you through a test that says you're feeling fear. We can't. And so if you're, when, when you are having an experience, you're, what was happening is, is my experience was placing a finger on something that reminded you of an experience. And mm -hmm. then that cr triggers a story and like a judgment, right? And a belief. And because we slow down and stay in our experience, we're able to be aware of these, of these things coming up. And every time we do that, I think of it as like juggling. Uh, we're upgrading our, our awareness system, our connection between our brain and our mind and our body. And we're giving ourselves, we're picking up all of these little tools from the men around us, right? Mm -hmm. Like the way I speak, the way I coach myself and say the story in my head is something or the, the, the emotional vocabulary words that I use. Uh, and, and so it's, it's just this like amazing dojo. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And yeah, thanks for breaking it down further because you're right. Like we can't tell someone what they're feeling, but through this work, experiencing it in ourselves is important. And, and that's where I feel the connection happens, right? That's where the brotherhood happens. And um, yeah, I, I think it's so important. And like you said, it is powerful, you know, if, if it can heal the world, that's amazing. Um, but it's definitely powerful in that sense. So, you know, I, again, just commend you for the work you're doing and, and the journey you've taken. Um, I guess one of the last questions I would have is, as you were making that transition from, you know, your, your career to what you're doing now, what were some of the challenges you felt or hurdles in, in making that transition? I love when I love how it's like to, from there till now. It's like, like man, I'm still I'm still in my my I'm, I'm still going through my own journey every day. Mm -hmm. um, I I think to just speak from my own experience from even today. Um, someone someone told me that like healing is a spiral. Um, mm -hmm. It's not linear. And it's not, it's not even a mess. It's not even just up and down. It's literally like a 3D, 4D spiral. And I think if you had asked me that question 
every every month or every six months from of my life it would have always been like how do i show up to um i think it would have always been the same thing for me uh it just would have been a different way it was coming across in my life Mm -hmm. right and so for me it's this for me in my experience it's been really meeting with myself, uh, realizing that um, I am not responsible for your feelings and your emotions and that that's not bad, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think in my, in my upbringing before I was even consciously aware, I was, I was constantly worried about how my mother was feeling. I was constantly worried about how my father was feeling and that, that uh, anxious attachment style is pervasive right? And it also creates some of my favorite parts of myself, right? Mm -hmm. As my identity of being like the guy that's like always the friend that's like going to call you up and be like, hey, how are you doing? Or like the, um, the, I love throwing parties, right? Like, I love throwing parties and not being the one in front of the thing, like just making sure everyone's happy, Yeah. right? So those are constructive outcomes of that. But a destructive one is like, is really just being able to to do this work, like to do the work of my dreams. Like, like this is, this is literally my dream. And I would do nothing else with my life. Like, Mm -hmm. and and it, and it it has been only in the past three years, has it been to a place where I trust that Mm -hmm. and then two years and then one year. And now like to be here, I still am reminded by that. There's, scary places in my mind of am I safe right like and uh and so it was that trusting like like learning to trust myself but what I will say um learning to trust myself and learning to love myself and learning to care for myself as specifically as literally like just giving myself a hug and and taking a bath and like like taking a bath not a shower like mm-hmm. right and 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 really taking care of myself and then but then the funny thing is as i look back on all of this is the problems in my life are my curriculum and we each have our own mm-hmm. i needed to go through this process to discover this mm-hmm. right like that's one of the things we talk about all the time in this work, especially with guys that are new is that, oh, great. Like all of a sudden I'm like, holy crap, I've got, I can feel stuff that I've never felt before. And that's when you know your awareness is increasing is you have a perception of your awareness increasing. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, wait, we're not in this work to not have problems. Like, like, because that's the point, right? Like, like you're becoming more aware. Now you start becoming more aware of more, more shittiness in your life. Yeah. Right. Like, and it's like, so with great awareness, more awareness, now you actually have to work more on more softening to those challenges. And it's just a deepening, like you're just deepening and deepening and deepening into it. And um, yeah. yeah, So, yeah, no, I agree. I think with that awareness like you said you're more willing to deal with the problems and work through them and identify them and that's something I've experienced too is you know you're you're so afraid or you're just so unaware of whatever you've been dealing with your whole life and all of a sudden you work through it and it's just more stuff keeps coming up and 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 you deal with that you put that to bed a new situation arises and (laughs) and it's never ending but the best part is you become better at it and 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 you like I said and you said you become more aware so um I think that's amazing that you've highlighted that and I think the fact that you mentioned that you know you are a certain way because of your childhood and you can't feel bad or shame yourself for it because it brings out all these positive qualities in you as well Uh, Mm -hmm. but it's being aware of some of the destructive stuff and working through that so you can but i have shamed myself like i and i know I, and, I, and yeah. I do i just want to make sure that like 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 i think that that's the um 
in my experience, like when you were saying the, like the put it aside and then, or mm-hmm. you get through this and then I get through this, is that um, I talk, this is, so there's this other way of, the, another way that I like to introduce into this is that there's the hard way and the open way and the hard way and the open way, the hard way doesn't mean it's hard. Mm-hmm. They're both challenging. Um, they're and they're momentary decisions. They're not. They're not decisions like on um, for a month or a week or a day. They're like for every moment of your my life, every mm-hmm. sensation. The hard way means to harden to something, and the open way means to soften or to open to it. And even if I harden, I might harden to be constructive, to go out and get a job, use anger, use that anger to take care of myself, to protect myself. And it's like, great, I'm hardening. But then after that period of time goes by, it, my next choice is to open mm-hmm. right, and to soften. And I, and I think it's always in, that, in that, that pattern of like hardening and softening, almost like a juggling, because if we're completely open all the time, um, we ex- and we want to exist in this physical space, <laughs> right? Like then these are choices that we have to make, right? And so it's that choice to, to open, to, to routinely open to that, mm-hmm. that difficulty, that challenge. And, and then I say it just automatically starts to change your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, again, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. And I think it, it's all, everything you've said is really valuable. And I hope the listeners can get that. Um, I guess for, for people that want to find you social media online, I know you've touched on the unshakable man, but what are the best mm-hmm. ways to, to get a hold of you and, and even be a part of your, your men's group and program? Yeah, I, I would love any any man who anybody who identifies as male to just head over to unshakableman.com and we offer just free drop-in passes to join the community and to come experience stuff. And then once you experience it, if you want to support the brotherhood, you can then become a, a supporting member. And we offer this at a sliding scale as well, because it's really a major part of our values and my values that this work be accessible. And that's, I'd say the next mission of us is to become sustainable, to be able to sustain as a brotherhood. Uh, and uh, if they want to find me personally, I'm Chris Lee Wilson on Instagram and uh, just Christopher Wilson and everywhere else online, but at the unshakable man on Instagram. And also uh, this podcast, I think like it's, uh, it's just a, a, a real gift to be able to uh, be reached out to by you and for you, the way that you took that safe risk of vulnerability, even though it's safe, it's, that is scary. I mean, you showed up in our, in our group, like without and i mean dude I, I think that that really says a lot about how you show up uh and for me so yeah no i appreciate that thank you so much and you know uh again commend you for all the work you're doing and the difference you're making so um yeah it's, it's been amazing and just to be a part of that experience i'm super grateful for it so so thank you again thank you Well, that's the end of the episode. Thank you again for tuning in and uh, showing your support. Until next week.